Welcome back everyone today. I have another video. I'm playing Vivi today I wanted to try her out because there are new cards that actually kind of work very well with her And I'm sorry if I sound a little bit stuffy. Uh, I had a cold and I've been just recovering So if you hear my voice crack or something, that's the reason why but I wanted to make a video anyway and um, Yeah, so this leader got the one card that it actually really needed for it to be more competitive and that is Charlotte Pudding being able to bottom deck your opponent's hand size is very very important for this leader because most of the time you're not going to be able to attack them early and then they're going to amass a huge hand size and then by the time you need to like attempt to go for game they're going to have a bunch of cards and it's going to be really difficult however putting does help a lot in that end it disrupts your opponent's uh next place because they had already like a a, a curve uh, and that's why they kept their their hand probably and not only that, but also um, uh, but also just it becomes a 5k attack if you want to. Something that they have to deal with. It's really, really good in this deck. And uh, really the reason for this leader to be uh, a little bit more playable right now, of course. I also wanted to try out this guy, Aram, Aramaki. Hope I said that correctly. Uh, it makes sense. It's an A-drop that you can draw a card and attack with him immediately. And make him uh, a plus 3k. So he attacks for 11 um so it makes sense to play him it's also a blocker that you can play uh that's not bad either it functions as a blocker for ak can save you out of some scenarios so really nice i wanted to try it out i, I didn't disappoint uh i don't know if it's, it's better to play four chunks than this guy but four chunks is the other card that you get out of the, the the deck red rock was really good but red rock didn't leave a body behind so basically you were taking your whole turn just dealing with a big with a big guy chunks deals with pretty much any threat on the game and um at the same time he's able to um to establish a 12k body that is going to win you the game very very important for the deck i i'm thinking that after playing the matchups uh what i'm gonna end up doing is probably gonna play instead of the law which was decent but uh instead of him i could play um a gordon or gordon like ability so you can combine with Chanks and uh, be able to remove bigger guys like Big Mom. And you have that answer for like in the future. That could be really good. It makes a lot of sense and it will help you in those matchups where uh, Chanks is not as good because he can knock KO cards like Big Mom, right? Um, it could also be... Um, uh, uh, that's probably the only change that I would make. Everything else was fine. You could also play more zero cost cards that this card breaks out of your hand because you do play a couple of them and getting getting rid of these cards out of your hand is difficult when you draw multiple of them so uh having this access to these kind of cards is very very important um the one cost blocker is good but you know it's not that amazing um i'm playing gion for the nami matchup i think nami is not gonna be an easy matchup if you don't have this card so definitely wanted to play that one and then uh, this 2k counter because it, it allows you to deal with small creatures if they're doing like otama um not otama uh, makino one drop and attacking you this guy at least is able to attack get back to the hand and then you can you can keep doing it doing it if if that's the case is what that's what you need in the matchup of course uh yeah i mean uh the deck is very nice uh it was really fun to play and uh really wanted to showcase it uh yeah let's just go see some gameplay and a huge thanks to Car Market for sponsoring this video. All right, and we're gonna go be play against Luffy Purple. Uh, this matchup, at least we're going first, so we can stifle his um, removal. And we have Putin, which might still be good here. Tax me for seven. I might take that one. Yeah, probably correct. I don't have a play, so that's why I'm like. Kind of want to fish for a play here. Now we do get this guy. This guy is going to be insane against this matchup because the Luffy wants to attack for like 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven every turn. Or whatever the number he can. Oh, that was a good draw though. That guy is really good. Mm, I will combo something here. I don't want to show him the pudding. But I think I should have comboed the pudding here. Because this guy could be my play next turn. Oh, yeah, I, I'm gonna try and put him anyway. And I can attack with this guy for six into the. Um... We're gonna do the put in anyway. 
an attack for six into the um, the Zoro. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter. And now that we shuffle his hand, he's not. He probably the play that he had in mind for this turn or the next turn is been um is been damaged. If he if he had a, a nine drop or something like that, yeah, like he he has to do with this guy, Jim Bard, instead of playing like a nine drop or something else. So I feel very well here. Uh, he's gonna attack with the leader for a bunch, so I just get to combo the second pudding because I don't need a, a, a second pudding here. And then he attacks for six. Uh, yeah, the pudding can die. She doesn't really matter. And now we just take him over here, uh, bottom deck that guy, give it a brush. And these Almirals are actually going to come into play very clutchly here uh, because we're going to be able to attack for a lot. I mean, it's, gonna be, it's also a good defensive play. Like in this matchup, just AK defense, very, very good, very meaningful. He plays Queen, interesting. I mean, he's trying to rebuild his hand, trying to uh, get the cards to to do something else here, right? I think. He gets uh, Luffy. That is the, uh, the, yeah, take an extra turn Luffy. But even if he does take an extra turn, I don't think he's in a good spot. I'm still at four life. Like I'm still blocking and just comboing one car. That is very, very punishing for him. He has to attack with this law for don't deal me damage. <clears throat> uh, seven. I probably would take this one. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Actually, pretty nice. And then here, oh, we have a law. But we're gonna play the Almiral here because uh, I mean, it just makes sense here. Attack with this guy <coughs> for eight. And then if he blocks and combos, then he won't see the uh, the other one coming. And then I don't have to keep it on defense because, yeah, we're good here. And we draw a chunk, so if he plays a white beer or something like that, we are cover. <coughs> uh, one second. I'm sorry, I'm still sick. He did play the white beer, and um, he was able to attack here, but, I mean, we get to block easily here. And uh, attack for eight, attack for eight now again. So we are really, like, applying the pressure now. Uh, this is not something the opponent wants to see. The Chanks was really back-breaking, because he was trying to set up white beer, white beer into maybe uh, Luffy, take an extra turn. But now that's not, that's not something that he wants to do here. No, he might. Okay, so he destroys finally the blocker, which has been a, a bane of his existence here. And I can uh, attack me for seven. I could probably just combo out of this seven. And yeah, just discard the law probably. Even though it's good, I don't think I'm gonna need it. And then here, just attack for seven. I mean, for eight, for twelve. And I can just play the the A drop and pass, because what's he, what's he gonna do? He needs to play the eight. The he needs to play the um, the chunks, right? Like this turn or next turn, I just have these many attackers, so I just get to block for free two attacks. So it feels good for me. Like this guy, even on defense, is is kind of nice. I wish the guy restand. I think that's what it was missing for this card to be good. Uh, it is decent on this leader because you get to either have it as a blocker or able to rush it in immediately, which is good. Like he has a big body and he can remove two drops, which can come into into uh, clutch randomly. And then he attacks for uh, seven at my leader. I just block it <laughs> for free. Now he can take an extra turn he wants to, but that's not it's not gonna be good enough this should be enough for me to win attack for six i can just combo to that one and he probably kills one of my cards sure whatever if he's not attacking my life then he's not doing anything cheeky okay that's a new card that you play uh, on, on this deck 
Now, I forgot that you could use... Oh, this is a terrible look at the top five, but it's fine. Um, uh, you can just go remove the blocker and go for game. And I should have just done that, but... Attack for eight. Should have blocked this one, but I, because I forgot my ability on this guy. Uh, but this guy can actually just remove that guy for free. So yeah, he my opponent didn't know about that ability. It's kind of a card that no one uses, so I can understand why. Then I attack 12, he has to take this one and then attack with everything else into this one. And even if he survives, even if I, if he doesn't kill him, like how is he gonna ever come back here? It's just no way. I have two live, three lives, so there's, he cannot kill me here. And then he will be like a one card in, card in hand at best. Uh, he would have lost the game either way. All right, and we have the Kata matchup here. Um, we drew a card going first. That's it. That's the only thing that we've done so far. Um, maybe the pudding could be good here. We'll see. Uh, at least we get to play the blocker and draw a card here. Although if he does have Gadatsu, that could be really bad for us. But maybe we can do a pudding next turn. If he does play Gadatsu. Hmm. This feels bad, but I guess it's fine. Can also do ulti next turn. Is it ulti or pudding? I think is I think it's probably worth disrupting my opponent's hand. Because they have a plan and probably bottom decking his plan is better. But I'm not entirely sure. He attacks for five. I block. So I think it seems like I'm going to do pudding. Oh, no. I'm going to do Borsalino because I'm going first. Right. So I want I want the poor presence here. Now he's on eight down. A Karakuri could be really punishing for us. But he doesn't do that. Okay. And then he attacks for eight here. I should probably combo to that one. Okay. Sounds fine. He plays a Sanji. Then I think it's, it's probably is putting time, honestly. But I also need cards in my hand. So I probably attack with the Borsalino first. Uh, I don't know. Seems really rough at the moment. We do have some sort of press board presence right now. But the problem is that the next turn is the 10 drop turn. And and how do we deal with that that the, the big mom? I don't I don't have a good play for big mom right now. And he defended the Gadatsu, which means that we the pudding is not gonna do anything else anymore. Which I don't know why he defended the Gadatsu, honestly. I guess we we'll still play Chanks here. And that's the that, that's the one thing that we lost that, that I lost from the deck. Now that I, I play it this way. I don't I no longer play um Red Rock, so we cannot like bottom deck this big mom. That's a huge issue. Because if he goes back to back big mom, it could be a really bad for us. At least we're able to utilize the uh, the pudding here and attack for five here. That can give us a send blood of like tempo here. And if we had another pudding, maybe we can do something about this, right? At least we have the blocker for the uh, the big mom, but he has reject, of course. That makes it a little bit more difficult. So what do we do now is the question. At least the one drops don't do much here. I don't think so. Oh, he's going to attack for everything into... Into that guy. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're going to play Chanks next turn. If his idea is to KO or creatures, then Chanks is not a bad idea. We'll go Chanks, KO that one. Attack with this one, and then maybe we can kill the big bomb with chunks. 
Okay, and we can also just hit uh, another pudding. Okay, no, he doesn't go for that plan. Playing these creatures. I think he saw the, the chunks and he didn't want to play the Lin Lin anymore. So that's that's fair enough. I mean, it's not like the Chunks is doing too much here. If Chunks were able to remove Big Mom by itself, that would be a huge help. Attacking 10 into this one? God damn. And then I, I'm going to try to keep the blocker because I think it's, uh, he's going to kill my my uh, king anyway. It's just a matter of um, what am I going to defend. And here, as I was saying, like my hand size is just too low to be able to compete right now. That blocker might be able to buy us a little bit of time, I guess. Attack five here, see if he wants to combo. He doesn't. Um, then I guess attack with chunks. See what we can do. Another option is if if I draw the one drop uh, law, because I do have it in the deck. I can play ulti, draw a card, draw a card, attack with the ulti, and then play the one drop and the other blocker. And we are able to do that, which feels good. Yeah, that feels like the play here. Although I should have, because I'm not going to draw an extra card here. I am, um, however... Uh, attacking for 13 is kind of weak. I probably should have attacked his leader. I'm not, not going to be able, not gonna lie. And here, if he has reject, he has reject. Also, I don't want him to have the um, the tap your blocker and go for a game. That also kind of hurts, hurts me. So that's why I, I was trying to do it this way. Um, but let's see how he is going to manage. He does have enough cards to be able to go for a game, I think. If you have a couple of the... Um, Amarus and also probably like reject too because you can reject here right now and that would be really scary let's see how he does it you can also just go after my board no 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 you could probably do something if he does after my board oh he holds Struzen Struzen gets rid of the law that's bad. Now I don't have enough defensive cards here. He can go 7-7 seven, seven and, and go for game. He attacked for 6. He attacked for a bad number too. But he can go 5 and then 10. Yeah, he's good. He's good. It didn't matter. He could just go for game either way. Okay, and we're going to go first against uh, Sabo. I don't want to play the lot just yet. Because <clears throat> if they have like removal for like small creatures, then he gets KO easily. Uh, I might play next turn depending on what I draw. But yeah, I don't, I don't want to play this turn. Okay. Just doesn't do anything, of course. I mean, he plays an army, but that's okay. He gets a Sanji, the one that has Rush, which is interesting. To say the least and we can combo out of 2k so we will the, the the key on this matchup is gonna be being able to defend a lot of attacks and then here defending this five is just 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 correct now I think I will play the Ura here and I do like that Borsalino because Borsalino is really good in this matchup uh, since I'm not gonna be able to kill his cards being able to remove them is gonna be really good so definitely um, what I'm looking to do here I could have played the Drake and attack but I don't think that's gonna be good next turn it's probably just gonna be better to play uh, a Borsalino since I have three of them and I'm able to just block out of this attack that's just insane value I will take the damage here because I don't want to be without Connor um, just gonna attack for five here and then play my Borsalino he might not defend it because I mean he might think that I have a rusher that I can attack with but he does okay that's that's okay that's I don't I don't mind 
He still needs to uh, apply two down to be able to even attack with it, like to do something. So I don't think it's, it's that big of an issue. Um, see what he does, however. Now this deck having a lot of rush and ways to protect his cards is very annoying for us. Like it's difficult to uh, to remove everything. But I think we're gonna be fine, I think. It's not that big of an issue. We'll take a life here probably. And I just want to defend my leader as much as possible because I have a lot of two for ones in my hand. So as long as we can get to the late game, we're gonna be in a good spot. I think so. And this chunks in our hand is kind of bad at the moment. But maybe we can find because it, it gets protection from the leader. And he attacks my Ura. I'm, I'm going to let it go because I want to protect my leader more than I want to protect my cards. I can always do a two for one on every card that I play. So if he wants to attack my cards on board, then I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I could do a king and attack. But let, let, me, let me attack with the Borsalino first. See what he wants to do. He wants to defend it with that one. So instead of playing king here. I should play Borsalino because it deals with one of the cards and it allows me to attack the other one. So if he wants to give me AK worth a combo here, I'm okay with that. If no, then I deal with both his, his creatures and I'm, I'm really okay with that. Okay, that feels really good. So then um, I have the eight dropped, I uh, two eight drops now. So that's actually a, a meaningful clock. And then I. This is where the um, the leader does come into play here. The fact that you can um, that you can uh, protect his white beard, I cannot KO it with the tank drop, is really meaningful here. So I think I'm gonna just gonna attack with everything here. Attack for eight eight eight. I could play the Borsalino again, but I can do that next turn, and this turn I can just draw a couple of cards. Attack for eight eight. And then nine, probably. He combos out of that one. So this is a lot of attacks coming. Okay, okay. So he, he he's being a little bit smart here. Since I have so many attackers now that are above uh, AK. Um, his thinking is, is probably better for him if he combos early. And then he puts the pressure on me. So I kind of agree with this strategy that he's going for. Now, double chunks here is terrible for me because I really don't have anything to do here. Uh, but we finally draw one of the discard spells so we can do something there. And chunks here is annoying, so I will take the damage here, but I still have a lot of combo power. So I highly doubt that he's going to be able to um, deal me damage here. Now, he's keeping up a radical beam here, which is annoying. So I guess the best thing that I can do is just keep using my... Uh, my Borsalinos here and then attack for a bunch of attacks and then I just have to survive the next turn. Easier send that down, but I think it's possible. My opponent has been playing correct and has been drawing extremely well here. So it makes it a, a little bit more difficult for me. I'm gonna keep one done up in case the last card that I have is a radical beam. Um I have to out combat of this one. So let's see what he does here. He attacks for 10 again, so I have to have combo to that one too. Hopefully we do have a lot of 10Ks here. And then I have 7 worth of combo here. So if he has another rusher, okay, it doesn't work on this one. So I have 7 exactly here. And he needs a rusher and he needs the Nami to connect. Uh, probably I'm gonna need a like a, a 1k or 2k here so I can leave because I don't think he attacks for five five would be too troll he attacks for six I think is correct um, I guess it didn't matter if he attacks for six or seven because I got the uh, back kick manners and I was able to defend this attack so now yeah he's not gonna be able to to survive all right, and we're going to play against Reiju. Uh, that's a good opening, of course. We're going second, which is not ideal. We definitely want to be going first, at least on this matchup. So we can assemble a, a, like something on the board. Uh, I really should have... I mean, 
we're gonna we should defend early as much as possible um and then see what we, if we can get to like a 10 drop 10 drop maybe uh scenario maybe that's the way that we can win this matchup uh very difficult uh i think but maybe that's the way trying to not take too much damage early on is is, is gonna be key important here Uh, what does he do here? He plays five. Okay. I'll combo out of that one. And I think I played this matchup a little bit incorrectly, for what I remember. Um, I mean, comboing out of that one is correct, of course. It depends on what my opponent does here, too. But um, I think he's probably just going to play the, the blue one. Try to apply pressure early. That would be correct. Uh, then I should absolutely just I think I was a little bit scared here of uh, playing like a creature and get it bounce back to my hand But I think the right play here instead of drawing to a car here was to play the uh, the ulti Because I need something that I can pressure back his creatures, right? Uh, so that way he's not like getting ahead that early and also he plays around um, the pudding bottom deck in our hand because, yeah, we can have a lot of cards in our hand, but if you put in or hand away, then our hand is useless, right? So I think uh, it would have been a, a lot better if I do that. Like, he can bring the 7-drop, and we can deal with the 7-drop on a combo-to-combo -combo basis, I, th I think. And then um, we would have been in a much better spot here. Then I combo everything, trying to not take damage early on. Uh, I assume he's going to play just the 7-drop, yeah. So he gets uh, going really fast right now. And then if I would have had a... If I would have had the ulti here, what I could have done is draw a car and then attack for like a big number into the into the blue one. And that way we don't have that much pressure going in for them. Or we could have we even attacked the red one and force him to give us like his whole hand to save it. But yeah, here he just we just attack for five into the leader, which feels really bad. And then yeah, that this is just not it. This is not what we should be doing to to win this matchup. <clears throat> and then yeah, we have a lot of cards in hand, but a pudding just can solve that really quickly, let me tell you. And then now our hand is looking terrible. Um Hmm. Yeah, I definitely should have done this a little bit different. He attacks for seven and our uh our ulti probably. Yeah, trying to get rid of it, but yeah, we just don't have anything on our also being in on the, in the off curve or going second for this deck is kinda of, kinda of rough. Nah now we're not drawing in any of the two yeah, it's, it's going really badly for us, let me tell you. And then next turn at least maybe we can play chunks, but I if this turn consists of like a, a purple poison into a another Neji, I don't think we can beat that. That's too much uh, value and advantage here going into uh, my 10 drop turn. It's just I, I cannot keep up with that. I don't think so. So yeah, very difficult for us to deal with that. Mm, he's going to raid you. He gets to draw three cards here for free. Then he goes the four drop. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna concede to that because I have nothing going on for myself here. He has four creatures. Uh, he's gonna attack me a bunch, and I cannot. I cannot defend myself enough. Maybe a pudding could have saved me here, but I don't. I don't even think so. You know what? Maybe a pudding could have saved me here. But I, 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 I'm th I think I'm going to take enough damage here that I'm going to go to zero life. And then from there, it's just really impossible. All uh, right. And we're going to play against white beer. Uh, we're going to go second, I think. And we're going to go first, um, which is fine because we do have the blocker. And in this matchup, this blocker, kind of insane, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're going to wait until next turn, I guess, to play him. Uh, we'll, we'll decide. We'll see later. He's gonna play the Makino. Hmm. 
I wonder if this is correct to draw here. It's probably correct to play the blocker. But we can play it slow. We can defend a lot here with this leader. <clears throat> and our opponent, I think he has to be aware of the fact that we can bottom deck his hand. So I think going early on into this kind of uh, stuff is very good for him. And then keep playing cards here. I think it would be really nice. Time for six. Okay. Forces to combo a couple of cards here. And he plays Marco. Okay. Definitely what... Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Definitely what he needs to be doing here. <clears throat> now, I would attack the um, the Machino, but since he ha he has the blocker, attacking the Machino seems kind of pointless, to be honest. Because he can just block and give us a 5k. And then I don't have a, a defensive play. And I have to defend my, um, my Shura. So I think it's... Well, I guess it would be a 6k, so I don't have to defend it, but... I think it's just fine to do it this way. And then um, he plays another Ezo. Okay, reveals the 2k Connor. Um, okay, plays a second uh, of, the, of this one. Interesting. Attacking for fives. I mean... Here I think you should be attacking for like a little bit of a, a little bit more. Maybe. Yeah, I, could, I mean, I guess you're going to play something else. Joshua, that's not a good play though. That is definitely not the right play here. Now here I can uh, play the Drake. Uh, and I see a bunch of 2k Connors, so... I mean, it's not bad here, but I, I'm looking for the pudding, and we finally found the pudding. So we can uh, bottom deck his hand. Unless he goes crazy and does something that I... Although he, he is applying a lot of pressure here. So even though he hasn't taken a damage, he does have a lot of creatures that I have to deal with. So maybe, maybe doing a pudding here wouldn't be that good. And right here, he's going to be able to... Yeah, like, this is, uh, this is a lot. I'll take that one first, because I don't know what I'm going to... Oh, and he plays the Robin. <clears throat> so he has been able to keep his hand low enough to where doing um, pudding is not like that advantageous to me. I might still do it next turn, but also I kind of want to do the Borsalino. Because it allows me to attack and also... And also he has been playing his whole hand, so it's not as bad to play the Borsalino here. And I have to put show in the pudding, so he has to be prepared for the pudding. I don't know if he was expecting it or not, but... Uh, right now, this is just the best play that I can do. And I'm going to attack for 8 at his life. Because attacking at the, at the um, ace doesn't do much to me. So, one or two things is going to happen here. He either is going to take it, and he goes to a lot of cards in hand. And then we can, um, we can do pudding next turn. Or he's not going to take it. He's going to keep his line hand size low. And then it doesn't matter if he does put in or not. Because we're going to be able to... Because um, he has a low hand size anyway. So doing put in is not going to be good. So uh, he did the work for us without us having to play put in. So that's the, that's the power of putting on this matchup, I think. Now, we do... We are able to defend this one. And I think we shall. Because we have... Oh, he attacks for six. I'll take that one because I'm kind of low in hand. And I'm going to take... No, I'm going to try to do the chunks here. I think chunks will allow me to close the game next turn. So I just need one more turn of defense and that's it. Let's attack with Borsalino here into the ace. I assume he's going to be able to defend this one. He lets it die. So then I'm just going to play the 10 drop and then call it like all. Oh, you can go here. Uh, letting him die, letting the ace die was kind of a, a weird decision there. Because now what does he even have? Okay, he gets to play white beer. Probably just going to block here with the drake. The problem with white beer, if, if I have another chance, then that white beer doesn't do really anything. Mm, 
We don't have the white beard though. Uh, I'll get the 2K Connor and send the other ones to the bottom because I don't think I'm going to need them. However, this A drop is actually kind of nice. An attack for 12. He has to defend this one or the other one. I will go 12 12. It's fine. Because I just want to take cards out of my opponent's hand. And next turn, we can get rid of uh, small blockers if he does play those. And then now I'm just going to go 12 here. I don't need to do anything else. Okay. So now I think he's priced out into actually going for game here. He doesn't have the best cards to actually go for game. He already used two of the um, Makino. And um, Joshu is not really a good attacker. So I think my opponent has done the best that he can. Probably he didn't have the correct cards here. But he's getting out tempo here. And you see the chunks. The chunks is really important. And although him letting the ace die was kind of uh, really troll. Unless he didn't have any other option. Letting the ace die, die there was wow. And he's going to go for my leader. I assume. But even then, like, there's just no way that he can win here. I have too much counter power in my hand at the moment. Yeah, it doesn't matter what numbers he does here. He plays the five drop Luffy. Nah, yeah. That is not it, let me tell you. Then that Joshu was about to play altogether. If you're not going to attack with it, Joshu was about to play then. I mean, attacking for five is fine and all, but it's not, it's not it. Then from here, it's just a matter of closing the game here. Uh, I don't think he has enough defense to do anything else. Seven, yeah. Just take it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Because uh, I'm going to go for game next turn. 17, <laughs> I mean, uh, 22 with Chanks, and then it still have the eight. And we drew another with the uh, Almiral here. <laughs> Yeah, he had the Radical Beans, but it didn't matter. He should have defended the A's. That, that he should have done. All right. And for the final thoughts on rating on the deck, I mean, it's not tier one yet. I mean, maybe he's missing a couple of cards, but he's getting there. That pudding was really a, a, a really great addition to the archetype. And um, I, I, I would say it's probably like a 3.5 to maybe even 4. Uh, a star leader uh, there are some decks that are gonna have a, a hard time versus what she's trying to do the amount of value that she can amass uh is really difficult to overcome sometimes so yeah i mean it's a really nice deck uh let me know what you think about the deck with that being said thank you all for watching and have a good day